As you know, we're going to start a series of talks starting tonight on the subject of sex and male-female relations. We're going to go very leisurely, very slow. At times it might, might indeed get pretty hot because it's a subject, it's a way which is very confusing to most people, being confused about life in general, confusion about sex plays a large part in it. So as we continue with this series on Friday and Saturday, a few preliminary remarks. One, please. Do not think in opposites. See both sides at once. I mean this. If I say that women are schemers, please don't unconsciously or verbally say, well, what about men? We're well aware that men are schemers. Don't think in opposites. I simply am going to, on the verbal level, take sides, both sides, one to another as it happens. I'm sure you'll agree that all men and all women are equally mixed up simply with emphasis on different parts. Women may be more emotionally cruel, men may be mentally cruel, and so on. Secondly, and very, very important, remember that everything we talk about in this series on sex and male-female relations, remember that it connects directly, firmly, with everything else that you've learned in these classes. Sex connects very much with the fact that you should be very attentive to what is going through your mind right now, for example. Sex connects very much with the fact that you have resentment of other people. You have to begin to see these connections for yourself, and you will. You'll see how sex is simply one, one pit in the total jungle that we wander in. To wake up, to wake up means to wake up and be in command of the sexual parts of your nature. To be asleep means to be a slave to your sexual parts, where it, it is in charge of you instead of you as a whole awakened human being being in charge of all of your parts, including the sex parts. So to start with, let me ask you a question which you can work with. Work with yourself and with me on this, please. And you won't be able to give a very clear answer, but I'm going to ask a direct question and just watch what happens in your mind. You're supposed to be observing your own reactions to everything I say. So I'll ask you a question. Ladies, real honestly now, how do you feel generally toward men in general? And how do you honestly feel specifically toward a particular man in your life? How do you honestly, honestly feel? Once you've got your romantic nonsense out of the way, once you've got your familiar comfort of knowing this man for many years out of the way, once you can see that maybe you're even afraid of him, how do you actually feel toward this man? Suppose you could express your feelings very honestly and he couldn't get mad at you or leave you or bop you or whatever. Suppose you could express your actual feelings toward him. What would you express? Well, let me tell you right now that it would not be one thing at all. Because ladies, now remember what I said about not going into office, I'm talking to men toward women too. Your actual attitude toward men, ladies, has about 50 attitudes included in it. One minute you're sorry that he's there, the next minute you're sorry that he's gone. One minute you're glad that he's around when you have a business matter you can't handle and you hope he speaks up for you. The next minute you think he's tying you down. There's so many other nice men in this world that you could just meet if you were free of him, but you're tied down and resent it. So you have many, many feelings 
toward this man. Men, you have many, many feelings toward women in general and toward perhaps one woman specifically. See already how we've connected the idea of sex and male-female relations with this whole business of what we're talking about here? You don't have one attitude, which means you're not whole at all, which means that you're not in charge of your relations to the other other person, whether it's merely a casual good morning Tom in the morning or whether a, a very intimate sex relationship. You're not in charge at all. Which means you don't understand men, you don't understand women at all. Which means you don't understand yourself at all. You don't understand yourself in the slightest. What you do know is what you want. What you do know is what you want from that woman, men. Which means you're her slave, by the way. So let me go into something very specific. And we'll go back and forth specific in general. If you want a right, right relationship with a man, with a woman, you should know by this time that you can't have it until you have a right relationship with yourself. It's exactly the same thing. A free relationship with that husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, casual acquaintance, whatever, stranger. A right relationship can only be achieved when you are in charge of yourself. If you're not in charge of yourself, you will want to be in charge of that man or of that woman. You will want to be in charge in order to intimidate or to get what you want from him or her. Ladies, you want the security of having a husband? You want the security of having a man around? You feel less afraid, less lonely? Men the same way? You had better straighten out your mind so that you can have that man in your house or get him out if necessary and get him out fast have nothing whatever to do with him. Otherwise, dear ladies, you will love the man who is destroying you. And he will destroy you so subtly, so casually, that you won't know what's happened. And then instead of growing old when you're 70, 80, 90, Instead of growing old consciously, you'll grow old asleep. And then when you're no longer physically attractive, you'll be terrified instead of in charge of your life. All because you wanted something false from that man because something was false in you. Stop and think about that phase just for a minute. You're relatively young, most of you here in this room reasonably attractive, I suppose. You have to judge that. And you can still attract men, still attract women into your life. All right, that's fine. On a certain level, that's quite natural. It's not wrong to want a woman. It's not wrong to want a man. We didn't say that, and we'll never say that. Right now, you're living in a fool's paradise. Because you've taken... What you are now is the way you're going to be for a long time with only vague little intimations from your mind that someday you'll be old and wrinkled like that woman down the street or that man you see walking along the sidewalk. You're going to sell your soul, I'm afraid, most of you. I'm afraid most of you in this room and most of you listening to this tape are going to sell your soul to a woman. You're going to sell your soul to the company of a man. And you'll waltz. You'll waltz to the Strauss waltz out on the ballroom floor, and you'll go to bed together and have great sex together. You'll die alone. So it's very important to all of you. You'll die asleep. It's very important to all of you pay very attention to every facet of what we talk about because it all connects very much all right now to another phase of it a 
a home where the woman is dominant and the man is passive is an abomination unto God. A home where the man is weak, where he listens and takes his cue from the woman, is an abomination unto God. It is unnatural, and they'll destroy each other, and all the children will grow up neurotic. So I want to talk to you men. You women can listen to. You men, you miserable little wretches. You miserable little cowards. Fawning before that woman. Giving her what she wants. Doing things for her in order to get into the bedroom with her in order to take her out to dinner and have her companionship so you can brag that you have that pretty woman out on the dance room floor. You miserable little wretches. You are destroying yourself and destroying that equally stupid woman. If she permits you to destroy yourself, she is permitting you to destroy her. She plays the game. She goes along with it. She thinks she's going to be young and attractive all her life. She lives in her distractions. You men, which do you want? The kingdom of God? Do you want truth? Or do you want that flattery and that sex from that woman? You, you take your choice tonight because you can't have both. You men listening here in this room and listening to this tape, you will never again, I order you esoterically, you will never again put up with nonsense from a woman. You will not put up with her flattery of you. You will not put up with her sickness. You will not put up with her madness. You will say to her, we're going to have a mature relationship or goodbye. Either you leave or I do. I don't care which it is. Dear sweet lady, you have nothing to give me. Nothing whatever. Because I have something far more valuable than that. If you want to be in my life, if you want to go to dinner with me, if you perhaps, maybe we have sex sometime. We'll get into that more detail later. And that's fine. That's natural. The minute I see you behaving like a nut, I'm going to tell you that you're a nut and get you out of my life as fast as I can. And you will stay out. You will stay out permanently if you want your sickness more than you want the truth that I have decided I want. You will stay out until you, or like otherwise, tell me in one way or another that you're going to obey God rather than your own psychopathy. Obeying God, first of all, obeying God on the natural level, where God made you a woman, and God made me a man. Therefore, as a woman, you will drop your attempt to try to dominate me with your threats, with your stupidities. You will drop that in favor of what is natural for you as a woman toward a man, which is to be intelligently and consciously passive, which is not submission. Because in a right male-female relationship, there is no such thing as the usual terms of domination and submission. If you even want to come to me, dear lady, and learn what these things mean, what I've just told you, either by my attitude or verbally, if you want to come and learn what these mean, then you can come and I'll explain them to you. 
I'll tell you why, dear lady. I want the truth more than I want you. You're a very poor uh, choice in place of the truth. There's no contest at all. Not since I found out a few things. Not since I discovered what real values are. Now, if you don't want that, goodbye. I'll wave to you as we pass on the street now and then. Goodbye. I'll smile at you and you can smile at me. And that's the end of it. You men have the primary responsibility. The primary responsibility, not all of it, primary part, because you are the active force in a male-female relationship. You are the active force, the aggressive force. Therefore, you have the major responsibility for making a male-female relationship as it should be, for making it right. And you can only do this as you do know about spiritual principles, about cosmic facts. Because only by knowing those can you indeed make the choice where you seek first the kingdom of heaven instead of that woman. If you seek the woman first, your relationship with her will be a sick one on both your parts. You'll be trading with each other, you will be lying to each other, you'll be deceiving each other, and you will hate each other very often in between so-called loving each other. Can't you begin to see, even with what we've had so far, can't you begin to see, connecting it perhaps with your past tragedies with a man or with a woman. Can't you see that the game playing has to start, has to stop, excuse me, has to stop completely, and you men, cowardly wretches that you are who fawn before women, which I've seen right in this room every weekend, can't you begin to see that you, you, as a man, have to take the initiative in teaching that woman for a long time as you try to teach the woman properly and she listens you will teach her wrongly because you don't understand what it means to teach her from the truth you'll try to teach her from your usual sick persistent desire to dominate her in order to possess her in order to feel superior to her You'll make endless mistakes, which means that the woman's part, in turn, is to stand there and see you make endless stupid mistakes trying to teach her. And so you get taught yourself in many ways. You can see both sides of the picture. That man, ladies, if he is trying to do what is right, will make many mistakes, and your part is to be very patient as he tries to teach both of you. And you can teach him too in your own way, your own way being many things, one of them being very, very patient, All, also not rising in anger or wrath when he does the dumb things he does, for example, substituting domination for simply an understanding of the whole situation. We'll get into sex later, don't get impatient. So I'll ask you right now to look at your own life and tell yourself just exactly, as a rough estimate at least, what is the level of your relationship with a particular man or woman or with men and women in general? Would you say, for example, stupid men, would you say that women scare you? They do. There's not a man in this room who is not afraid of every woman in this room, and vice versa. 
All of you women are afraid of every man in this room. You're also afraid, both men and women are afraid of men and women out there. Now how can you have understanding? How can you have communication? How can you have a right relationship as long as you're afraid of each other? One reason you're afraid of each other is that each of you hopes to get advantage over the other. Each of you hopes to get as much from the other as possible while giving as little as possible. Repeat. You repeat in your own mind what I just said, because this is exactly the way it is. You want to give as little as you can while getting as much as you can from that man, from that woman. woman. You don't have any real kindness toward each, or, each other at all. And I'll tell you why. Instead of kindness and understanding of the opposite sex, you have a desperate desire toward them. You think that they, she, he, has something that will make you feel better, make you feel secure, or whatever. This desperation, desperation toward the opposite sex, cancels intelligence toward him or her, and also cancels gentleness and kindness, which are the essence of a right relationship between a man and a woman. You, you have no possibility at all right now, none of you in this room and listening to this tape, you have, you have no capability, I should say, right now, in being nice to that man or to that woman because you subtly and secretly want something from him or her. You can be kind toward that beautiful woman, toward that unbeautiful woman, toward that handsome man, toward that unhandsome man. You can behave rightly toward them when you don't care whether you have him or her in your life or not. As long as you want desire, depend upon having that man, upon having that woman, you will have a wrong relationship with him or her. You will have a dependency, you will have a possessiveness, you will have a familiarity, you will even enjoy his cruelty. Now what kind of a brain do you have, women, that you enjoy his cruelty towards you? Well, at least he gives me attention. How mixed up can you get? Understanding, cosmic consciousness, living in truth, must be the boss of your sex center, of your sexual desires. When it is, when it is first, when the kingdom of heaven is sought and attained first, all else follows properly. Then you stupid men can't be taken in by a sexy but malicious evil woman. Any of you men ever been taken in by a sexy evil woman? Huh? Then you dumb women can't be taken in, used, exploited, loved and bedded by a cruel, vicious man. The reason you were is because you were just as vicious as he was. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yep. So what are you going to do? Go out and look for a nice man? How will you know one? <laughs> How can evil find anything but evil out there? Your evil will find evil and call it good because you want to sell your soul to that man or that woman. See? See? This rousing business of sex connects very, very much with you and I straightening ourselves out inwardly, completely, so that we're not slaves. Some of you dumb men, and if I'm, my memory was that good, and I know I've seen it without consulting my memory, I've seen some of you women smile at some of you dumb men 
And I've seen that make your morning. First place is was probably a mechanical smile on her part. She was probably thinking about the donuts. <laughs> a smile to get you out of the way so you wouldn't look at her. You can only find a nice man or an authentically nice woman when you are nice yourself. So let me ask you, ladies, let me ask you, gentlemen, are you nice or are you sick? Answer the question to yourself. Until you're nice yourself, you can be conned by that woman and conned by the next woman and by the next woman. And then you have the stupidity to complain that you can never meet a woman who's worthy of you. Now, what I've just talked about the last couple minutes is not a very popular topic. <clears throat> Sex is much more fun. Talking about you getting in charge of yourself is not at all popular with you or with anybody else or with anyone listening to this tape. You want the excitement of a talk about sex and male-female relations? We're going to have that. Continue with it. Look, this class is very serious. This class is very true. It's very honest. And obviously you're not going to be given cheap thrills on this topic. You're going to be told what you need to be told in order not to be a guilty little, little man, a little woman who is captivated by sex thoughts, who is a slave of sex emotions, who is a slave of the sex act itself. Drunk has to have a, a drink of alcohol. You have to have sex or you'll feel empty, left out, cheated by life. That can be just as much a compulsion as drink. Sex can be a real pleasure. Very nice, very relaxed, completely relaxed. When you can take it or leave it. If you have to have it, you'll get the, the thrill on the physical basis, on the sex basis, you know what that is. You'll get that thrill. And wanting that more than you want truth, the thrill of sexual climax, for example, will steal your soul. And you'll sell your soul for that. Pleasure of sex climax is not wrong. Nature put that in men. Nature put that in women in order to preserve the human race. Therefore, it's natural and not wrong. Why don't you put truth before that and see what happens in your sex relations? Why don't you put truth first so that sex takes it right part instead of being your, your tyrannical slave master, which it may or may not be. You have to answer that. When boy meets girl, it's never a question of whether they boy is neurotic or whether the girl is neurotic it's always a question of the degree of their respective neurosis both are unhappy both are confused both hope to find in the other what they feel is empty lacking in themselves and heaven help you both are looking for the other person to do their thinking for them. Both want the other to make the decisions. Both want the other to take their responsibilities. Both want us both want to be a small little kid and expect the other to be mama or papa. And do you ever wonder that it's a sick relationship?
So one is as bad as the other. However, I will say this. In this class, we've had the term sick people, which is most of us. We're all mixed up in one way or another, to one degree or another. But there are also what we call super sick people. And if you have an ounce of perception, you should be able to spot a super sick man, a super sick woman. And your very spotting, spotting of him or her should be your signal to turn around and run as fast as you can before that charming psychopath cons you because you're so dumb. You'll end up out in the desert, maybe. Or you'll end up heartbroken and bitter and hateful, maybe. And maybe you've already had this experience. Maybe you've had it to some degree or other. And it's your own dumb fault, and you know it. Because you had no knowledge of human nature, either of yours or of the other person. Put it as simply as possible. Learn to be very observant toward that man you meet, toward that woman you meet. Watch, watch his or her small remarks when you go to the cafe for the first time. Watch the little flicks of annoyance in her eyes when the roast beef isn't just exactly as she wanted it. There is your clue. Pay the bill, take her home, kiss her politely on the forehead, say good night, and silently or openly say goodbye. I'm serious and light at the same time. You woman, women, you watch that man when he pays the bill or gives the tip. Of course, he'll try to impress you by putting down more than he would when he was alone. You watch his manner in little things. And if you're attracted to his sickness instead of repelled by it, what's wrong with you? Do you want to lead a, a free life upon which a right relationship can be established with a man or with a woman? Do you want a free life under which everything else is right? Or do you want to sell your soul for that night out, for that dance, for that party, for that gift, or for that string of men, for that string of women? So you'll have to make up your mind which, which you want. One of the happiest days of your life, ladies and gentlemen, will be when you suffer the conscious pain of saying goodbye. I'm not going to be in your company anymore because I know that I am getting something poisonous from you which I simply cannot afford anymore. You can do that either physically or psychologically or both. It all depends on individual circumstances. What a delightful day. What a true day. What a bright day for you. When you're able to say goodbye, even if there's pain there, the pain will go away, by the way. In its place, you'll wonder why you didn't do it a long time ago. You're not even going to let, let a false sense of religion tie you to another person because you want God more than you want religion. All these things have to be individualized, personalized which you can do. All right, we have a long time for questions and comments, if you have them. Yes, Rudy? If a man were awake, Vernon, would he have more than one relationship? I'm talking about sex. All right. I want to uh, answer that in a different way, Rudy. First of all, I want to tell you that this is a very special subject. And I also want to tell you 
that there are certain questions I refuse to answer, absolutely refuse to answer, because they are wrong questions. This is one of them, Rudy. I'm not saying it's a bad question. I'm telling you that it's a wrong question. It's wrong, and this type of question is wrong in many ways. One, one, you want the man sitting up here teaching this class to give you either approval or disapproval so that you will have a course to follow. And I happen to, happen to follow what you want to do, then you're happy. If I happen to answer in a way that displeases you, then you're unhappy. I'm not here to make you happy or unhappy, but to put you in a position where you can answer questions for yourself, not because I say yes or no. So I will decline to answer many questions. And I'll get one of them out of the way now. I'll answer it, but perhaps not in a way that you would want me to answer. I'm not going to answer in the way you want me to. Why do you ask it? Why do you put it that way? What justification do you want for sleeping with a woman you're not married to? Or vice versa, anything. Why do you want me to make your decisions for you? Wouldn't that be nice and easy? You're not going to get away with it. You're going to have to answer it for yourself which will be the only satisfactory answer there is. So, to get it out of the way, in case some of you ask, do you believe in marriage or don't you believe in marriage? It's very simple. I believe in marriage for those who believe in marriage, and I don't believe in marriage for those who don't believe in marriage. See? Have we cleared that? <laughs> So the answers will be quite different from what you from what you want. You ask yourself why you ask that question, why you put it in a certain way. If you ever ask a question which I sense you want me to justify your destruction, I will not answer the way that you want me to, so that you feel good about destroying yourself. If you can imagine such a thing. And you can. Yes, Juanita. When you're working uh, from the command center, does command center think in terms of gender? Would you say that again, please, loud and clear? I missed one word. Okay. When you're working from the command center, yes. does it think in terms of gender? No, God doesn't have any sex, if that's what you mean. So how important, how much value should we put on being either a male or a female? You don't put any value at all as, far, as long, as, long as, as far as eternity is concerned. You have to put value on it on its own level, because you're either a man or a woman. And as I said at the very start, you had better begin to think, feel like a man or a woman or whatever God made you. And that reminds me, I have a little work project. Effective as of tomorrow, those of you who come to this class, I want to see women dressed as women. I want to see women look like women. It'd be delightful to see a flower in your hair, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I don't want to see flowers in your hair. <laughs> I want to see you men dress like men, behave like men, which is the hard part for you, especially toward women. You behave like little fairies. I don't mean that the wrong way. I mean submissive. You men in this class will behave like men toward the women in this class. You women will behave like women toward the men in this class. Think about what it means. Don't you come in here if you're a woman looking like a coal miner. You look feminine. You look soft. Oh, oh he's trying to change my exterior. Did you remember one time we had the lesson that if you can work on one center, that one center done properly, done rightly, but done deliberately, done voluntarily, that one center, in this case your physical center, 
can begin to give the idea to the other parts of you ladies that are not so feminine some of you women have very masculine attitudes right in this class aggressive masculine attitudes some of you men have feminine attitudes and I can spot it a mile off tomorrow ladies let's see how feminine you can appear to be men see how masculine you can appear to be just a minute please If it makes you uncomfortable, ladies, to dress like a lady, try to suffer through it. You may feel good about it eventually. As a fact, I guarantee it. Juanita? I'm not sure if I know what being a female is. I'm not sure if, uh, if I understand why I should be completely female. That's a, an awfully vague question. Could you say it another way? Are you, does it bother you to be either male or female or whatever? Well, it's bothered me now that I'm being told that I should be strictly female. What are you? Well, on the surface, it looks like I'm a female, or I am a female. Did God make you a female? Yes. Hmm? Sure he did. Sure. Why not just be a female? Why make a problem out of it? Why do you make a problem out of being what you are? Why do you wish to be the opposite? Well, if I'm starting to lose my identity, why should I keep identifying with being female? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. What is your physical body, male or female? Female. Let it behave like a female. You don't have to think about it. You know what? It'll, it'll behave like a female all by itself if you cease to interfere. This is very complex. Linda. Uh, by the way, loud and clear, everybody. I just don't see what clothes have to do with being male or female. It's merely style. What is your attitude right now? What is your state right now in asking that question? I think I'm hostile. Yes. Can a hostility ask an intelligent, clear question? No. All right. Why are you hostile? What are you afraid of? What is scaring you? I know, do you? No, I guess I know. Uh, we'll find out sooner or later. Vernon, the quote is, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Like to seek truth. Now, I feel that I that I am seeking authentic truth. Now, it, the quote isn't after you have found the kingdom, then things will be added. As you seek an authentic way. Okay. Well, do you know the, what I'm trying the, to the, say? The male-female part will straighten itself out automatically. Yeah. And you may write down a sentence, please. Let naturalness have its way. Let naturalness have its way. Are we stirring anything up in any of you today? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Are we stirring you up? Yeah. If you were a complete woman, mm -hmm. you wouldn't get stirred up. If you're a complete man, you wouldn't get stirred up. You would have nothing to fight. You would have no opposite. You would be who you're supposed to be on the physical level. We will continue this morning with our topic of sex and male female relations. As I told you yesterday, this topic connects directly with everything else we've learned in this class. One of the things we've learned is to slow down. Stop rushing. I've been watching your faces, some of you in particular, watching a 
thousand impressions going through your mind, just sitting here for 20 minutes or so while you've been waiting. Slow down the impressions you get by looking at me, by looking around the room, by looking to see if whether the ladies did indeed wear flowers in their hair or if the men looked a bit more masculine in their dress. Just slow down so that this flood of misunderstanding doesn't carry you away when you're supposed to be listening this morning. Start with a sentence, please. Write down a sentence. Real insight does not associate with sexual neurosis. Real insight does not associate with sexual neurosis. Where you or I are sexually neurotic, and you understand what that means. You know very well what it means. Where we're sexually imbalanced, unbalanced, we are unable to think clearly towards sex in our own personal life or toward others. For example, how many of you, perhaps you men in particular, you find out, ladies, whether this includes you or not, how many times have you men, for example, been jealous of another man who has a woman you would have liked to have had, and you know you'll never have her, walking down the street or friends gathered in your home or you're at a party, and you look at that beautiful, desirable woman over there, and you're actually jealous of that man for having that woman, for having her in the bedroom. How childish. How immature. How you punish yourself simply because you lack sexual maturity yourself. So let me ask you as a question, let me ask you a question. Between the last meeting, which was last night, and right now, which is a few short hours, those of you who were here last night, did you have a lot of sex thoughts? Do you have many sex thoughts? Did you carry sex thoughts with you? Did you have any troubled thoughts at all? Any rebellious thoughts? Did any of you have any trouble at all? Listen to this. Did any of you have any trouble at all? I'm asking you, not, not stating it. Find out. Did any of you have any trouble at all being what God made you? It doesn't take much insight to determine which sex God made you, does it? Why don't you be that and be done with it? So that you're not troubled by it, so that you're not thinking unnecessarily, wasting all this energy that could be put into something else. When you're a complete man or a complete woman, there's no need to think about it at all. You think about it only when you have a problem with who you are. You may have all kind of mixed up identities. How many women perhaps might be envious thinking that men have advantages and opportunities that they don't have. That's a delusion. <coughs> it's based on your own neurosis, hoping that you could be the dominating one, wishing that you could be as dominating as a man. That's sexual neurosis in itself, which will make you miserable. You ladies, if you were only smart enough, you could, command, you could command a man completely if you were whole, which means you'd have no need to command him at all. If you want to command a man, you never will. You'll just be taken by him because you're playing the game, see? Or, listen to this, and I hope it embarrasses you off your chairs. If either sex, either of you ladies, either of you men, want to get petty little advantages in an association with the opposite sex, 
I feel very sorry for you because you're living in a pe petty, creepy little world. Now let's get specific. You get specific. What do you want from the man, ladies? Men, what do you want from the woman? Both of you should be ashamed of yourself for having a petty little mind that wants petty little advantages, Be being taken out to dinner. Shame on you, ladies. Wanting him to give you gifts. Shame on you. This, this is the level you live, live on. This is your goal in life. <coughs> you men want to get that woman into bed. Shame on you. This is where your mind operates. This is the way you, what you live from all day long. This is what your lofty ambition in life is, to get a woman into bed. Shame on you women, that's your ambition to get a man to marry you. Do you wonder, do you wonder now that you're so miserable, that you fight with that wonderful man you have? you call him bad names either under the breath or openly what a wonderful teacher it is to use to use your relationship with your wife your husband girlfriend boyfriend casual acquaintance that woman you work with down at the office that man you work with down there what an opportunity you have to make yourself sexually normal, free, <clears throat> by using every experience you have. Example, you want to be flattered by that man or by that woman? How pitiful. Again, this is the level you live on, wanting that man to tell you what a pretty dress you have on, how charming you look this morning. Try to think of ways from now on in which you can use women to be free of women, in which you can use men to be free of men. Now you reach that beautiful situation, that wonderful condition, ladies, men, where that man or that woman can walk into your life and walk out and it makes no difference to you whatever because you're not investing your spirit, soul, life in him or her. So that you can say to every man, every woman, you want to walk into my life? Fine, fine. But you had better listen very carefully. Dear sir, dear madam, and you had better look at the expression on my face when we first meet. Dear lady, dear gentleman, if you want to come into my life, you're coming into it on 100% my terms. And we'll get to that in a minute. And I think some of you are anticipating me. If you think you're going to bring your sack of junk into my life and try to unload it, it on me, no thank you. I've done it before. I've had it before, and I've had it. No. Take a very careful look at the expression on my face, madam. And I'm telling you right now, and you're getting the message right now, aren't you? And if you're so stupid to not get the message by the expression on my face, then I'll have to go into more detail so that you'll be disturbed and, and upset and nervous and angry that I don't accept your neurosis as my way of life. The vast majority of relationships that you have with the opposite sex should begin at 12 noon and end at one second after 12. The right relationship, the relationship of my terms are not your terms at all. 
You understand now where I'm leading, don't you? I know you do. If your terms are the terms of demands, of neurosis, of self and psychic hypnosis, then of course you're just blabbing something, blabbing something perhaps that you've heard in this class about being stern and tough. And so you have dumb self-images of being stern and tough yourself. And so you act it mechanically. And when she thinks you're a nut, she's right. My terms means the absence. <clears throat> My terms means the absence of your conditioned self. You don't say it at all, really, on the verbal level. You may. You may say it on the verbal level, but that verbalization of my terms comes from a higher level. You know it from the higher level, and you may have to speak it if the facial expression doesn't work. You may have to speak it to that woman or to that man if he or she is too dumb to get it. So my terms are universal terms, capital U. Cosmic terms, capital C. Which is very quiet which looks at that woman, which looks at that man, and understands perfectly that that other person <coughs> will indeed try to get what he or she can from you because you have already gone through the hell and the shame and the disgrace of you seeing that this is the way you used to be yourself. You were a little screamer, schemer. You, screamer, <laughs> sorry to... You were a little creep yourself. Having seen what a little creep you used to be, wanting all these little petty advantages. Going through the shock of saying, oh my God, I, I never believed I was that kind of a person, but now I see that I was, or still am for that matter. And have determined to die to all identifications to myself of being a clever little schemer who can get that woman and get that man. Having given that up, you now have the intelligence, the insight, and a knowledge of the law of cause and effect where you can look at that person of the opposite sex and know with perfect intelligence how to deal with him or her. Which means there's no anxiety, no ripping apart, no wishing, I wish I could have her, but... I wish I could have him, but. There's no but in there at all. There's no conflict. You want, you want to invite that raging maniac into your life so that he or she can begin after the, after the ball is over to start ripping you apart as you know he, and sh he or she must do <coughs> Do you think a tiger has any choice but to start clawing and ripping and snarling and biting? Any of you in this room ever been in trouble with a man or a woman? Huh? Maybe you're in trouble right now. Then listen carefully. You'll learn how to get yourself out of it. Example. Notice your ambivalent feelings toward someone in your life or someone in past life how, a, how one minute you loved him next minute you hated him next minute you were confused by him one minute you longed for him and the next minute you couldn't get rid of him fast enough see what that indicates what we've learned before that you having these changeable and fickle viewpoints <coughs> toward that man means that you are not one, are you? What you're doing is having attitudes based on that, based on your own conditioning toward that man, based on your own desire to feel secure. Stated another way, you have changeable thoughts toward that man, toward that woman, changeable thoughts all based on your supposed self best interest if he comes back I'll feel secure on the other hand I hate him figure that one out all right you will never ever ever figure it out thinking about it never 
you got into it because you thought about it, right? Thought of the advantages, thought how nice it would be to have him around, all the time nervous that that dinner wouldn't please him. You put that dinner on the table in front of him and tell him silently, please, to take it or leave it. Be a good cook as you can, you know. Take it or leave it. And if he complains, leave him. We have this vast army of thoughts, conclusions, judgments, plans, schemes, devices, emotions toward that person of the opposite sex. We have all of these. And we are constantly, and we're a fire, what's the word? We're a firingly, say it, Leland. We're a firingly. We're a firingly, changing them, switching them, in order to feel secure. Drop the mess. Drop all these thoughts you have. Have the courage to stop trying to be in charge of that man or woman so that there's no one in charge of him or her at all. And watch how utterly terrified you get that there is no one in charge. No one here who is trying to take charge of that woman out there. But if I don't take charge, she'll go away. Or she'll come, one of the two. Why don't, you, why don't you find out what happens in your relations with the opposite sex and in your relations with the entire world when you cease to take charge at all? When there's no one there to command, to try to bend the situation this way? Try, no, no one there trying to persuade that woman, trying to persuade that man? What's going to happen to you? It's going to be the end of you, isn't it? Right? Do you understand or not? Shake yes or no? Yes, yes. Or this way if you're confused. Now, what we're really saying is to let life happen. Then... Instead of trying to attract someone to you, for example, why don't you just see what happens when you make no effort to attract or, or repel another person, including a man or a woman? Watch what happens when you make no effort to either attract or get rid of, because they're both on the same level of thought, of self-interest, mm -hmm. of agony, of fear. In this state, you'll be fully intelligent toward people when they come into your life and when they walk out. What difference does it make to you if they walk in or walk out as long as you are whole? As long as you're not depending on them to give you something that you think you lack. Then, then, your natural affection toward a woman, toward a man, your natural right, true sex impulses toward a man or a woman fall into place without effort on your part. And there's no problem whatever with sex. Wouldn't that be a nice way to live? You men, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be nice to be free first of a woman, woman presently in your life, or a woman you think you might meet? Well, you meet women all the time. Wouldn't it be nice to be free of her instead of painfully scheming toward her? So that you're not worried whether she's going to come or go or not? You're free of her. What, what do you care? Not free because you say so, but because you are your essence, which is already free of her, by the way, which can then be recovered and be free toward her. It's a beautiful thing to be so free 
that you never have to say hello or goodbye. Understand? What a beautiful relationship. Not with him or her, with yourself. Now watch, now watch. Having a perfect relationship with yourself, watch how you have an absolutely perfect relationship with that man or with that woman, regardless of how he or she is. If she's healthy, you're healthy. If she's a psychopath, you're healthy. Makes no difference, does it? All right. Do you want this or do you want to argue? You want this or you want to fight? You want this or do you want the false pleasure of the fear of giving up whatever is wrong with you sexually? Whatever is wrong with you in your relationship toward a man or toward a woman. You want to dominate that woman neurotically? You're tied to her. You're her slave. You have to have someone to dominate, don't you? Right? Yeah. See? You're the slave of the woman you dominate. Why don't you give it up and see what happens? Let her go if she wants. When you give, uh, let her go and give her the message, she'll be so shocked she won't know what to do. She is depending in her neurosis on you dominating and being cruel to her. She loves your cruelty. Two sick people loving each other's cruelty. What's more dreadful than that? Wherever any of us have a disturbance sexually toward the opposite sex, that is where we work. We don't condemn the disturbance. We don't do anything but study it and find out where a false sense of I has created that disturbance. In a family, for example, if Papa is looked up to by wife and children, and you had better look up to me or else, what a dreadful situation that is. Papa can be aware that he is demanding demanding, if you can imagine that, demanding love and respect from his wife and his family. He's the boss, and you had better know it. He could begin to challenge his problem of needing to dominate, of needing to be the big boss, and so free himself and be boss of himself. And he may lose his wife, and he may lose his children, because they prefer a tyrant to a free human being having the potentialities of being a tyrant in themselves. Sickness, sickness is happy only with sickness. A sick husband is happy, quote marks, only with a sick wife. Understand? No problem there. Someone is going to have to make the move toward personal health. And it isn't your wife or husband it isn't your boyfriend or girlfriend, it's you. Might as well start today. If I must risk the anger of that man in order to find what is truly right, I will risk it constantly. Substitute woman, of course, if necessary. If I must risk the anger of that man in order to find what is truly right, I will risk it constantly. No problem in understanding what's behind that, is there? No. No. I will risk it constantly. Any man, any woman, wife, husband, mother, father, son, daughter, aunt, uncle, friend, anyone. All right. Let me review very briefly something. The real part of a man 
falls naturally in love with the real part of a woman. The real part of a man falls naturally in love with the real part of a woman. That does not necessarily include romantic love, sexual love. Because it's much higher than that. Haven't you ever, ever, have you ever met someone of the opposite sex, for example, who's not, you weren't attracted to, maybe a very old person, but you saw something very real about them that attracted you? For example, the absence of phoniness in that grandmother, in that grandfather, the absence of phoniness, you fell in love with that. I'm using the word deliberately. Now, to get a little closer to the male-female part of it, a man falls in love with a feminine woman. A woman falls in love with a masculine man. If the man or woman falling in love has something right about him or her, two homosexuals can fall in love with each other, and these can blast each other's life. All right, we might as well get it over with. The only kind of sex compatible with self-awakening is normal, natural sex between a man and a woman. Queer sex, homosexual practices, odd sex, creepy sex, unnatural sex will keep you out of the kingdom. You'll never find the kingdom if you indulge in, prefer, have a longing for unnatural sex. Sex in itself is normal and then we go ahead and ruin it and distort it like we ruin and distort everything else. It is quite right and quite permissible to enjoy sex and you will only really enjoy it on a higher plane, so to speak, if it is natural, normal sex between a man and a woman. Period. You want to argue, find out what's wrong with you. Don't you dare engage in anything abnormal sexually. Don't you agree to it from anyone? Have normal right sex relations and that's just fine. That's all you need. What would you like to talk about? We certainly have enough. <laughs> Yes, Rudy. Loud and clear, everybody, please. Normal sex has no violence in it. Start over, please. Normal sex has, sex has no violence in it. There's no, like, uh, the books on, the, the, what do you call it, Psych psychology will say that there's sort of a little bit of animal in, uh, in sexual uh, relationships. Uh, sort of a little bit of jealousy there and that this love would not exist if it was not there do any of you in this room know what it means to behave decently sexually toward the opposite sex do you think you have to have jealousy or violence or, or win, what's the phrase, one-upmanship, whatever it is? Are you making it a contest between you and that man or that woman? Are you making it a contest? Well, look, why don't we all become normal? Then, then we can forget the question of sex and won't have to think about it at all. We can fall into it naturally without thinking about it, without anxiety, without hoping for it. 
Why don't we straighten ourselves out so that straightening out will answer all these thousands of questions we have? Cry if you want when truth tries to take away your sexual neuroses cry but let them go then eventually see that your crying was stupid to begin with you cry because God wants to take away your conflict think of that what do you think of that you're crying because truth wants to take away your self contradictions And I don't want, I will repeat in case I said it last night. I don't ever again want to see any of you men fawning toward a woman in this group or any other woman. I don't want to see women fawning before men in this group or any place else. You be a man, you be a woman in charge of yourself. And not a little simpering creep who wants something from that man or from that woman. You be a man, you be a woman awake, alert, conscious, knowing what's going on the minute you turn around that corner and see that woman, that sexy woman walking toward you, that sexy man walking toward you. You watch what happens the minute you turn a corner and watch each other out of the corner of your eyes as you approach and pass. And watch your great agony, you stupid men, when you see her pass and nothing happens as an excuse so you can talk to her and you know she's gone forever out of your life. Had you met her, you might have prayed a month later that you'd walk down the other street. I hope that you're first aim is to free yourself instead of enjoying the stimulation of talking about sex. Questions, comments? Duffy. It seems like all society life has been based on a, on a competition. Competition? Yes, on a sort of competition to be the most charming hostess, to be the best cook. All those striving, I'm speaking strictly of women, to be the most beautiful and also in sexual matters, to be the most sexiest, and yet of none of them we have any real idea what it is, including sex. All right. Are any of you women in this room, or ever have been, jealous of any other woman in this room? Mm -hmm. You've been jealous of some other woman in this room? Mm -hmm. Have you ever hated another woman in this room? Mm -hmm. Have you ever cattily criticized any other woman in this room for her behavior? How about you men? You've been jealous of any other man in this room? What's this business of competition? Are you that are you that desperate for recognition, for affection? That you think you have to compete? There's no competition at all. Why don't you go out of this room today, whether you go out alone or with someone else, why don't you go out of this room and go home and be happy? Instead of thinking about it. Thought ruins everything. Misguided thought conditioned thought, emotionalized, neurotic thought. Why don't you go out of here today and enjoy yourself? Instead of thinking about what you should do to enjoy yourself? There are not enough thoughts in the world you can conjure up to keep you happy. You have to keep the old 
squirrel cage running all day long, don't you? Wearing you out. So delighted when that phone rings, you don't care who it is, someone wants me. I hope it's someone I want. <laughs> It'll be someone selling you roofing. classes over the last several years, I've come to the conclusion that truth is exactly the absence of anger and nothing else. Uh, when I first started coming, this all relates to what we're talking about now, sure. obviously. When I first started coming, coming from a traditional religious background, I somehow had the idea that truth existed in certain formulas, that is, certain approved opinions about how life should be conducted, and that the key to living a proper life was to discover these formulas or these opinions, such as that I should attend church, pay my tithing, abstain from alcohol, etc., etc., in the context of everything we've been talking about and that that was the key, but that is not the key at all. The key, as you've suggested many times, is to observe our response to what is said, and that is the issue completely. If there's anything about me that needs to resist what is being said, that is the problem, not what is being said. And if anger is present, I am wrong because I am lying. Yes. If anger is absent, truth is present regardless of any opinion held by anyone in the world on any subject whatsoever. Well said. And you even inspired a sentence. Please write down. Don't answer the knock of neurosis. <laughs> Don't answer the knock of neurosis. And guess whose we're not going to answer, first of all. <laughs> ah, dear, I'll, let me tell you, I'll tell you something. This heaviness you feel, why do you love it? You're so afraid to not have a heavy spirit. I said, you're so afraid to not have a heavy spirit. Give up the delusion that the heavy spirit is doing something for you, that it is adding something to you, and give up most of all the delusion that the heavy spirit is all you have and therefore all you ever can have. How dumb to walk around life with 20 bricks on your back saying this is a necessary burden. Shake your shoulders, shake it off. You can do it right now, by the way, this very instant. Shake yourself psychologically, physically if you want, <laughs> and shake off the bricks. They're a hoax, they're an imposition that you need not endure. Don't be in love with your sickness, please. Don't cherish it. It will love you to death. <laughs> Let's probe a little bit. I gave you the sentence about enduring the wrath of someone because you've chosen the way out and you may have to endure the wrath of someone, not necessarily someone who's opposed to you finding the truth. They may not, not even know about it. I'm talking about uh, enduring, enduring the wrath of someone that you're associated with who in some way or other dominates you. You want to please him or her, and you're so insecure that you want to please him or her, 
and you don't want to arouse his or her wrath lest the man not take you to dinner tomorrow night or the girl not give you what you want, men. Try risking the loss of the benefits that you are getting, getting from that person by enduring their wrath, by being true, by not trading. Find small ways at first To say no where you usually say yes, or yes where you usually say no, depending on the situation. And very consciously watch that sudden first little flick of surprise in his or her face that you're not going along with his sickness anymore. Watch the first, this is going to scare you, you understand? You're not used to being scared yet. Start getting used to being scared from him or her. This is the beginning of the calling the, of the bluff of it. And each time you do this, you get a little more courage and strength to be who you really are. And who you really are can endure perfectly and without a bat of the eyelash the most monstrous outburst of a horrible temper and insanity from that other person. Do you think, do you think God is bothered by the, the stupid ragings, the childish ragings of the devil? If I may put it this way, God goes ho-hum. <laughs> There he goes again, the little nut. He never learns. This is how you'll be able to behave toward someone that you're trying to free yourself of by freeing yourself of yourself. Correct? If you're associated with nutty people, their chief purpose in, in life is to drag you down to their nutty level. And you had better make it your chief purpose to no longer permit it. And to do that, you had better begin to see what you are doing to yourself by agreeing with that person. He's not, she's not doing it at all. Yes, Jim? Realizing that at this time we don't realize know what it's like to live on conditions. Is there a proper protocol in sex regarding just for procreation and then beyond that is it is there is it sublimated into something higher? That was pretty profound, Jim. I don't understand. <laughs> Would you try again in simple language that I can understand? <laughs> When you look, okay, in the animal kingdom, how the time comes for procreation, the female is the, the instigator in this. Okay, and I it, guess. It's, it's a naturalness. Okay. Okay. Is this the same situation in humans? And then when you get beyond that, is it supplemented into something higher? Oh, I know you're, look, I know you've, probably many of you read in books, rise above your sex center and all that. Let me advise all of you to understand your sex center before you ask questions about sub sublimating it, that's the right word? Yeah. To something higher. Please understand what's going on now instead of 10 years from now when you're a spiritual saint. 